And Philip, I'm going to make you co-host. Okay. Thank you. All right. And we will start the HRC meeting here at 6 29, 6 30. Guess whatever clock you're looking at. Two of my clocks say a different thing. So whichever one you want to go with. Uh, and I will read the Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of me of no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. All right. And with that, we will move to action, or not action items. Um, on here, I noticed that the agenda was a little bit different on there. Uh, are we going to member reports or? It, it does look different because the CSSJC members, it was supposed to be a joint meeting. So I'm not sure if Allegra just accepted the meeting. So I'm not sure where the other members from CSSJC are at the moment. Yeah. I think um, that might be on me. I think I had mentioned that we might do some HRC stuff before at our last CSSJ meets, mm -hmm. CSSJC meeting, and then we'll get to this. So I think they're most likely not coming on until seven, I believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then I guess then we will move to this one join. No. Okay. To member reports. Does anybody have anything to report out to? Hi, Liz, we see you. I'm moving you over. Oh, Liz, Liz, you might have something to report out on for the Affordable Housing Trust. So I don't have to do it. <laughs> I was, but you all didn't let me in. <laughs> I was like, wait, Hello. Let me in. that's why I raised my hand. I'm here. So, um, Philip and I met this morning with members of the Affordable Housing Trust and the Health Department, Health Commission. Yes. And we are planning a listening session with some follow up with different um, town groups in order to hear from the town members and not only um, town members, but uh, folks that live here, folks that want to live here and can't work here, live here, people that work here and have to live in out of towns because they can't afford to live here. And who am I missing, Philip? But anyway, we're going to try to, we're, we are planning on May 4th, a listening session with all of those entities, all those folks. And again, inviting folks that um, kind of run the town, if you want to say that. Um, in order to hear from people as to um, their living conditions, their inability to get um, affordable housing and some of the stumbling blocks, et cetera, as to that. So that's um, a subcommittee that we're working on. And if I had left anything out, Philip, let me know. We met for the first time this morning. We're gonna meet weekly until May 4th uh, or May 3rd. May 3rd, when we have our, our listening session. Right. Yep. So, yeah, I think Liz hit everything that I would say then. That's um, for members of the HRC who will recall. Um, that's into our vote that we had taken back in January, I believe, or something. Well, the other, I'll have to look back at the notes, but of getting together a community um, listening session with the affordable housing trust and jen and pamela i meant to send you that email um earlier today but i just i have not actually been feeling well today so i went home a little sick and that has slipped my mind until right now when i'm looking at both of you <laughs> but uh, that email will come with the notes there okay that's great um i see that cssjc members are popping in cssjc members we're just going over um some hrc stuff really quick but as soon as i think we have a quorum then we'll kind of um dabble into that conversation 
Does anybody have any questions on the listening session with the Affordable Housing Trust? All right, I am not seeing anything. And then the only update that I have from CSSJC is that this Saturday, um, the 25th, we will be having a listening session with Cress. And so that will be in the town room at two o'clock. Is that what it is? Yes, two o'clock. So if you can just help spread the word, let your um, groups know, uh, anybody that can attend, that would be really great. Does anybody else have any other member reports from the HRC? All right, I am not seeing anything. I think that we will go to our first public comment, although I don't know if anybody's in the audience. But if we have any public comment tonight, if you want to just go ahead and raise your hand, and we will let you into the room to speak. I am not seeing any hands being raised. So then we will. I think we might have a quorum now for CSSJC. Is that correct? Am I saying that right? Is there four of us? Yes. All right. Well, then. I will go ahead and recognize the chair or the co-chair of CSSJC, Dr. D. Shabazz, to go ahead and call the CSSJC meeting to order. Okay, the CSSJC meeting is now called to order. Um, thank you, Phil. Hey, 102 roll call. Oh, okay, sure. Um, so, Miss Pat, here. I can hear you. I guess Philip, you're serving two roles. Yes, here. <laughs> uh, Doctor Freke. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you're missing Allegra, but maybe she'll join later. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we didn't really talk about how to do it, but I do know that you um, sent me that text message that you were a little bit under the weather as well. And so so um, I will go and say that, did members have the opportunity to read the report? Yeah, I've seen some head shakes. Mm -hmm. So I think then let's open it up to a general kind of feeling of it what we what we thought about what we read. And so anybody at this time can take their or raise their hand and um, HRC members, um, if you also have any thing to add, I'm at hmm. Am I done echoing? Yeah, seems like it. Okay. Miss Pat. Okay, good evening all. So, hello? Um, hi, Ronnie, I'm wondering if you could maybe mute one, uh, mute yourself. Um, have you here twice? I, I have, right. It's because I can see on one and I can hear on the other. Um, and, Hello? Okay, we're good. Okay. So first I wanna thank the time manager and um, Ms. Pamela for the report. Um, I read it. Before I go into my comment, particularly about the report, I just want to remind us all back um, with July 5th incident, and CSSJC, HRC, 
you know, wanting something done. And Councillor Michelle Miller recommended having a joint uh, meeting with HRC, CSSJC, and um, our um, reparation group. Additionally, um, Councillor Alicia, during the, um, in one of the town council sessions, um, she proposed, made a motion to have APD to become anti-racist. For some reason, it didn't sit well with, with some council members. What ensued was there was a secret private meetings with the uh, police officers ignoring MS youth that were hurt by two police officers. Fast forward, the town council came up with a different proposal and that's why we're here tonight, which is puzzling to me because if the town council think or the town government think that we're going to forget or ignore July 5th, that's not happening. So I'd like to urge, you, uh, urge us <clears throat> that we center our report around what happened to our youth on July 5th. And, and I want to use this opportunity to announce that the MS5 BIPOC uh, families, they're going to be producing, actually they have their report, which I would like to suggest that we include that. They've been waiting for you know, this report to come out so we're not going to forget what, what happened in July 5th. It has not been addressed adequately by our town. And I get that our town manager apologized. Our chief of police never did. Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing is that I would like to suggest that in our report, just in, you know, include all CSS, CSWG recommendations, because I think that's how to address institutional racism in this town. Some have started with CREF program and DEI program, but they're still underfunded. And I think that um, what I like about the report, however, is the fact that the town is negotiating with Dr. Barbara Love um, to do the visioning project. So I want to thank the, th uh, the town manager and uh, Ms. Um, Pamela and Ms. Moistin that is, is doing this. I have a lot to, to say tonight, but I will stop. But I do have a lot of concerns about the report. While I praise what Chris is doing, but there's still, you know, um, evenings and overnights have, you know, not covered. So there are, there are residents who need the services that are not able to access it because of underfunding. The youth program, I think that um, our town government need to go back and read the CSWG report, recommendation, that the youth, the seventh gen, they did research and they were very clear that they need dedicated space for youth programming. We also have to remember that most of the public spaces in our town, you know, it's not, you know, some, it's not our space, basically. When I say our, I mean by folks. It's not a safe space. And so we recommended bicultural um, center. So all those recommendations, we need to bring it back to town council as part of our report. I will stop so that I'll give other people chance to speak, but um, the town has not um, repaired the youth that were hemmed by the 
uh, APD, the victim compensation, everything needs to be included in the report would be my, my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Hey, Allegra, I see that you joined on now. We're just uh, in the beginning talks about the report. So just any members from HRC or CSSJC that have anything to say about it. Is that an invitation? Yeah, if, you, if you're ready, I don't see another hand. So if you'd like to go. Oh, Ronnie has her hand up, so I'll be polite. Go ahead, Ronnie. Um, I can wait. Did someone else raise their hand? Okay, so I looked at this a little bit differently, um, partly because I don't have the history that Ms. Pat has. I just looked at the report and the mandate of the report, like what the report was supposed to provide. Um, and then I looked at what the report did provide. Um, and I did take a look at the CSWG report, which I skimmed only. Um, so the first thing I noticed is that the report is talking a lot about what's already been done, uh, which I wasn't expecting to hear. Um, and then I looked at the report by section because there were specific um, mandates that the report was supposed to cover. So then I have comments on each of these sections. Uh, should I just go for them? Okay, so the first one about community visioning. Um, I think that um, although visioning wasn't done by the CSWG, I think, um, yeah, so this one, there's talk about a visioning framework. I like the process in general. There's talk about a visioning framework, which is the first step. And I think it's really important to uh, uh, be more inclusive on the framework. Um, I know that people have a lot of respect for Dr. Love and she has, um, uh, I don't know her. Um, and I think as a resident who, do, who doesn't know the insides of all this stuff, it seems odd to just have the DEI and a, an outside consultant uh, develop the framework, which is quite important because that's going to guide the rest of it. Um, it's in stage two, I had a little bit of a concern because a lot of um, the key stakeholders mentioned were town departments. And then I was thinking, what about other residents, everyday people? Um, and um, there was reference to, uh, quote, along with some community members. And I don't think that's enough. I would like to see a lot more community engagement and involvement outside of these official departments of the town. Um, and then there was a reference to selecting members from round two, which was predominantly people from departments of the town. So I guess my overall comment about part one was that I would like to see a lot more broader community engagement um, and more input from everyday people. Um, then there's a draft strategic plan and I feel really it's important to share that kind of thing with the people who provided the data before going to town council in a formal complete sense. So I would suggest some kind of draft saying, here's what we heard from you all from our visioning exercise. Um, what do you think about it? And maybe giving people like seven days to comment on the draft. I don't know, I'm making this up, but that it needs to have that legitimacy uh, in order to be accepted later. So that's number one. Uh, most of my thoughts are on the resident oversight board, which was also recommended I see by the CSWG. And here it's really that um, I really do appreciate um, the importance of understanding some of the constraints of community action on police, because they're guided by their own, there are all sorts of state rules that guide their actions. Um, and you can't just jump in and say, oh, I don't like this, I don't want you to do this. I understand this from being involved with changing uh, local police behavior where I lived before I came here. Um, so I think that's important, but I would like to see also that 
the resident advisory board have a deeper understanding of power relations and how these are played out in everyday exchange. So um, yeah, we do need to know about post and so on, but we also need to have people on the board who have sort of a non-technical, uh, non-rational, more that fits with the experience of people on that uh, advisory group. Um, yeah, and I had some more thoughts. I won't go on and on. I, I can see other hands up and I'm taking up all this time. Um, and the RFB uh, process also, um, I, I feel like there's a lot of data. I didn't read it in detail, but so much data in the CSWG group. I think somehow all of that has to be brought into the analysis. Um, and um, yeah, uh, as far as the CRESS is concerned, I'm really impressed by the accomplishments of CRESS, but I don't think the report addressed the mandate, which is uh, continue to improve protocols. That was a quite impressive record of what they've achieved, what needs to be done. In my mind, it much more integration with how calls are received by the police department and how a determination is made about you know, does, is this something Crest does or is this something the police uh, do? And I know that's um, a longer process, but I don't see that it started. And I think a recommendation that would help me a lot is, you know, how, when is it going to start and how is it going to start and happen? And then finally, uh, the training, I really appreciate the TOT approach. I know there's a lot of evidence for its success. Again, I'm just wanna be sure that the right people and a broad base of representation um, is included in the TOT group. I fear that with 17 people who are already town employees who are part, supposed to be part of the TOT, I'm not sure if there will be enough um, room for community members. And again, I guess my bigger concluding thought is that I'm arguing to have, I would like to see much more broader community representation and involvement um, in the in these processes that are being uh, proposed, which I think are good processes. I just would like to see more of uh, everyday people in it. And I believe that the capacity does exist in this town. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie, for that. Uh, I'll see Allegra next. My tardiness. Um, so I think for me, the part one of the report or the bullet, I don't know how we're defining it. The, the thing about the community visioning, I feel like that was the place where I had the most positive feedback for the report. Um, I certainly like that the visioning has kind of a clear outline and I do agree with um, what Ronnie has said that we want to make sure community stakeholders who are not town employees are involved in that process as much as possible. Um, and I, I did like the, the train the trainer model that was discussed because I think that that's where some of the stronger coalitions with communities members can be built. Um, it seemed like to me um, and I just wondered if there would be some sort of stipend for people who were involved in the training um, program, because that again would probably bring more people to the table. Um, in terms of the resident oversight board, I was wondering, because to me, it seemed like in phase 1A and 1B that a lot of that work and research was already done by CSWG and 7Gen. And I just don't want a person to be replicating research that's already been done. Um, and I, I, this might be controversial, but I, I worry a little bit about um, some of these things seeming to be more pro-police than pro-accountability. Um, and I do have concerns if we're trying to promote trust and confidence in the Amherst Police Department when people are coming and saying, no, we have a problem with them. And, and I know ultimately the goal is to solve the problem, but I guess 
for me, the way that it, the, the way that I read through it, it just something about that jumped out at me as perhaps if this is the, I don't know, if this is the place where you're bringing a complaint against the police department, is the goal to have trust and confidence or is it, or is it to have the police be accountable for their actions? Um, so that was, I think, my main feedback around the Resident Oversight Board. Um, I guess I just, I had a lot of concerns on number three that that was just deferred to the resident oversight board when again i feel like the leap report really covered at least five key areas where policy changes could start and i don't know if there is some hesitation to start with policy changes knowing that a new chief will be coming in but i i think that we obviously have seen things haven't worked in the past and there's still been no resolution really to the incident from July for the families. And I think that having some changes to the policy and the way that police interact with the community is important. Um, and I, I don't want to continue to see things getting kicked off, you know, kicked down the road until, until something new is in place and then we'll look at it. And I just, I get concerned about that. Um, and again, because there was such strong research done by LEAP around the, um, the areas for policy change. Uh, under the CRESS, I agree again with what's been said that it is great to see the accomplishments so far. I have a problem with the wording that they're fully funded and staffed departments. I think if we're looking at what was recommended, it was recommended that CRESS would be a 24 seven program and that's not the case. And I think that even hearing from Earl that, you know, in a few CSSJC meetings ago that they were perhaps going to have to start declining to respond to calls, that makes me feel as if they are not fully staffed. Um, and, you know, I think DEI department has also had a lot on their plate and could really benefit from additional support, even, even just administratively. Um, so I took issue with that wording. Um, again, A, because it's not in line with what was recommended for those programs, and B, because we're already hearing that they are overwhelmed with the amount of calls that they're responding to and might not be able to respond in the future to certain things. Um, under the Youth Empowerment Center, I had a question about why it had been moved under the Recreation Department's purview as opposed to staying in DEI, which is where CSWG had recommended it. And I guess in terms of the working group, the town managers forming I'm wondering why students aren't on the list, you know, high school and or middle school students. Um, unless I missed it, it looked like there were a lot of adults talking about what the kids need, but where's the representation of the youth? Um, and I, again, had concerns around investigating feasibility of establishing a youth empowerment center program, because I think that leaves the door open for there not to be one at all. Um, and I think that the way that it is written in terms of ensure any proposed infrastructure improvements can be met by local sources unless additional funding is found. While I understand wanting to be realistic about the budget, I feel like this report is just setting up barriers for things to actually happen. Um, I was excited to see about the different workshops that have been provided. Um, and the different events that have been held so far by DEI It is impressive for just a staff of two that you have done so much. And I thank you for that. Um, and finally, under the communications plan, I just wanted to put in another plug again for including a translation plan in that, um, figuring out how translation services can help with the communication plan so that it's reaching non-native English speakers. Um, who make up a large portion of our population. Um, so thank you for listening to me. 
Yeah, thank you, Allegra. Uh, I'm gonna see Tyler and then I'll go to Deb. So Tyler. Yeah, uh, I agree with Ronnie about the need to have more community engagement in all of this. And especially with the recommendations in the report to hire consultants and it seemed to offload a pretty substantial amount of the process of setting up the uh, oversight board and other new institutions onto a outside consultant. I don't think that that's really a viable option as the be all end all because while a consultant can come and provide all sorts of outside experience and advice and perhaps even institutional knowledge, they can't really sculpt a plan specific to the town of Amherst in the way that uh, Amherst residents and the government of Amherst is able to. And without the uh, continuous and substantial input of Amherst residents and the continuous and substantial involvement of the Amherst government, then it's going to be going much to be harder to produce any actual results. Um, and I also did notice uh, what Allegra was talking about uh, with the crest section of the report, where it spent quite a lot of time discussing the um, demographic makeup of crest and sort of patting itself on the back. But yeah, there is a little bit of a dearth here in information about how crest is going to be moving forward and able to expand to uh, 24 seven responses and make sure that it can meet the load of calls that it's been receiving because this report definitely seems to reinforce that there's a demand for CRESS. And I think that the appropriate measure to take given this evidence of a demand and evidence that CRESS is able to be successful is to start looking at where CRESS might be able to be scaled up and moved up to this 24 seven capacity and perhaps even where it might need to be scaled up urgently in order to meet its current call load. Um, since now it's not really as much a concern of whether it's viable, but more how we take this viable program from its infancy to uh, a very sustainable, actually fully staffed and fully funded and fully equipped department. Thank you, Tyler. Up. Hello, everyone. Um, so yeah, I wasn't at the last CSSJC meeting, so I wasn't sure what time I was supposed to jump on. I was figuring, you know, I was told that this was around the time. So if, uh, Phil, if you can kind of say what you all are looking for, I think I have an idea, but if you can just be clear since I missed that. Yeah, so what we're just discussing right now is kind of um, general fills of the report, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, what we want to see proposed to town council as um, our piece on the advisory piece of it. That's the overall goal that we're doing as together as a group to get the report and be say, this is what CSSJC, this is what HRC views as both positive, negative advice type deals. So then are we going to, so based on what we say, are we putting something together and then we're going to be sending it out to who, to the town manager, to the town council? Because I know we're going to be going to the meeting, but I guess I'm just trying to figure out the lay of the land. Right. The path I, forward. I believe both town council and um, town manager. Okay. That and just sending that pre, pre the April 3rd meeting. Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. I do have, I, I do have, um, a variety of thoughts. Um, a, a lot of, I agree with a lot of what people said uh, already um, and just will probably be echoing or adding to a little bit in terms of, of what folks said. Um, in terms of, of number one, I did agree with a lot of, you know, in terms of the visioning, you know, I agreed with a lot of what was said there, especially if let's say the consultant is someone like a Barbara Love, um, then, you know, that would be someone that knows the, the community, and, and, you know, has been a long time Amherst resident and is social justice focused, um, you know, and obviously if we could have, you know, there could be a lot more input, especially from groups like us and other groups, but also outreaching, right? Outreaching me, one of the main things that I didn't see in the number one, the visioning was how are you going to outreach to 
the populations, the marginalized populations that needs to be there, right? It can't be the same characters. It can't be just us, right? We already, we already have platforms. We want to give a, a platform to those that don't have a platform, that don't have a voice, right? So how are we outreaching to that? I know like these group that we had hired during CDSWG to do the work that we needed, um, they were able to go into the community and get people's feedback and things like that. So we need to be more kind of thinking along those lines in terms of how are we going to get people's um, um, voice and messages around the visioning, because that's gonna be critical. We can't just have the same old, same old voices at the table. It has to be the ones that we do not have at the table to take part in the visioning. They're the ones that are, are, are the most impacted around the police and are impacted around what happens when, when policing goes back, right? So how are we gonna do that? You know, including obviously translation center, uh, translation services, but you know, who are we going to use to make sure that we're getting, right? There's a lot of people that are already involved in a lot of different communities. So are we going to use those community leaders to get um, in, in, an outreach to folks that can act, that actually needs to be sharing information around the visioning? For me, that's going to be critical. If not, it's just going to be a superficial visioning. And what's the point, right? So that, that would be my, my first part in terms of that. Um, in terms of the resident oversight board, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, like the, 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 the first, the RSP in terms of one, two, and three, that's, that's just delay tax, tactics and nonsense, you know, um, you know, it, it, we already did all that work at CSWG. Right now, it's about putting this in place. This is delay. This is delay, delay, and delay. Um, it's about Let's let's put the 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 you know what CSWG I didn't see that and I think someone had already shared that a lot of what CSWG did pay consultants to do and so on and so forth and research countless hours of research to do I, I didn't see here so it's basically rebuilding and regoing and then when is this oversight board going to be put in place we need this in place yesterday right so so you know that whole first part one two and three is just a waste of time and, and it's just gonna delay everything. And we need to make sure that that does not happen. And we're clear about that, that it's a delay and a waste of time. Um, number three, two, yeah, why can't we start reviewing the public safety protocols now? Why do we have to wait for the um, oversight board to do that? You know, that we had the incident, you know, as, as was stated, that hasn't even be, been fully resolved in terms of uh, July, right, incident um, with our youth and hasn't even been resolved. And so why are we gonna wait, you know? And like I said, if we if we end up doing what's stated here for the oversight board, who knows when the oversight board is gonna be in place. And so that means then we're gonna wait for them to be in place to then go look at, at the safety protocols. No, you know, we need to look at that now. This, there's an urgency in terms of that happening because if not, you know, these incidents, these incidents with BIPOC population is gonna to continue to happen. So. Um, that's, you know, again, delay tactics to me. Um, and then in terms of Crest, yes, you know, definitely agree with, with that this, they've done a lot, you know, a lot of work and a lot has been accomplished. However, you know, as, as everyone was saying, and even Tyler just, just spoke about how are we going to um, increase, right? Increase the budget, increase the staff uh, and make sure that it's a 24-7 um, you know, outfit, right? A 24 seven organization. And also, um, you know, just making sure that anything that is nonviolent is being responded to by Cress, right? And I think we had even, there was something uh, maybe you all discussed about it before around the dispatch, you know, because we, CSWG has said that we didn't think it would be a good idea for it to be dis dispatched from the, the police department. They need to have their own dispatch and things like that because they would allow for more people to, um, to phone in and, and get help. So there's a lot more that can be done. So I didn't see any of that here. It, it's touting Cress and obviously all of the wonderful uh, work that Cress has done. That's great. And 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 what? You know what I'm saying? Thank you. And what? Right? What's the next step? And what what else we're going to be doing? Uh, and especially around the budget. <laughs> I want to see some hard numbers to increase the staff and make it a 24 seven. Um. Let me see here. Yeah, a number five in terms of the youth empowerment, the same thing, CSWG, we had done a lot of work around that and had stated in terms of, of you know, the, the vision for, for the youth empowerment and the key members, the youth, 
why are we talking with the youth? Right? They're the only ones I want to hear from in terms of an establishment of youth empowerment center. Um, they're the ones that we need to focus on. Not it, you know, it's like what do they want, and then we make it happen, right? And we put the, and we we put the plate the um we, we pick the place. I think there's there's already different options for that, and let's and you know let's let's work on the budget and let's put it together. But they're the only ones I want to hear. It's young people and especially BIPOC young people, you know, people, um, 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 young people who are marginalized, you know, from, you know, LGBTQ, you know, different uh, able uh, young people, all of that, right? That's who I want to hear from. And that's who we need to be talking with in terms of creating the youth empowerment. Um, yeah, anyone else that there's really, you know, they, they, the adults are there to just make it happen, whatever the youth want, you know? Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, DEI has been doing a lot of workshops, definitely agree with that. Um, you know, they probably need some more funding too to, to, to continue to, to level up and to be able to do a lot more. Um, and then I agree with, with um, Allegra in terms of the communications with the translation and outreach and, you know, just making sure that those who are marginalized and don't have a voice are the ones that we're actually communicating to as opposed to the same voices. Um, so those are my main uh, points as of right now. Thank you for that, Deb. Uh, I'll see Dr. Shabazz. Yes, I'm going to remain off camera. Uh, thank you. And thank you for everyone's comments. I Can you all hear me? Yes. Um, so I agree 100% with what um, everyone has said. Um, I just want to make some points. Um, round two of the coming together uh, meetings, uh, and it says these meetings are uh, at the heart of the work for visioning. Well, if it's at the heart of the work for visioning and you have 17 staff members, that is clearly problematic, right? Um, because what that, as someone who, who does, you know, intergroup dialogue, what that sets up is an echo chamber. And so they're all the staff members, you know, not to say they're not thinking out of the box or thinking creatively or what have you, but you need the resident's voice at the table or you're simply talking to one another. And it, it, it borders on talking to one another to reinforce the status quo or whatever the town policies are. And that's not to say it won't, you know, veer out of that, but but that is what the setup becomes in how that visioning uh, process is outlined uh, currently. Okay, um, I do believe in it, but it absolutely needs residents as a part of that dialogue. It's about the residents, right? And their needs. And so then the resident oversight section, it, it also borders on becoming a means of justifying the, the new police standards, right? Things that are already mandated instead of using a model such as LEAP as Allegra referred to, and we've been referring to it since CSWG to create policies that are community and resident centered. All you're doing is rewriting the playbook to make sure that the current policing structure remains in place. Okay, so again, that's problematic. And just because you write it up in a report and it looks pretty, that doesn't mean it's actually going to serve the purpose and we're going to be back here again the other thing is that there's no clear complaint process for residents written into the resident oversight board structure this is something from research with my group and research with cswg that we have pointed out even before that it was the the main blarney blowout that happened a few years ago and we brought in an outside consultant a former chief from boston and that was his point amherst does not have a clear complaint process where residents feel safe to complain 
and that when those complaints are heard and that they need to be actionable if they are credible, that is not written into that process, okay? So same thing again. And then when we get to Cress, simply put, you know, you have this great program because of, and not to say it's just because of the novelty of it, Earl Miller's a, a great manager. So with the limited funds that he has been given to work with, he has done a great job. The thing is, it is a novel program in the state of Massachusetts and in the United States. So whatever kudos he is getting and Cress is getting, it is because it is unique. That does not mean you are creating a sustainable program. And so unless this program is supported and funded, eventually it will burn out and fail. So it has to be funded. If we see this is a good thing and they want to, they, you know, the town manager touts it all the time as look what we're doing in Amherst. Well, great town manager, CSWG is glad that they helped you create a program that is stellar like that. But then if you want to make sure that you can, you know, 10 years down the road, still brag about it, it has to be funded and cannot just stop at eight o'clock in the evening, particularly on a weekend where when we most need those services. And then lastly, youth empowerment. This youth empowerment center should be looked at, this BIPOC youth empowerment center should be looked at as the other side of July 5th. So we can complain, some, some folks criticize these young people, you know, you can complain about what these young people are doing or not doing. But unless you have a space and a place where they can feel safe and themselves and that they have some self-efficacy, we're going to have the same type of situation or worse. And those stakeholders must be the youth. It is ridiculous to have um, this whole conversation without those youth at the center helping to decide how this will look, how it will work. And then it's never lastly, but that's how it comes uh, in terms of the town's budget. If we want inclusivity as an ongoing process in this town and folks to feel like, oh, you didn't forget me, we must have translation services. We absolutely have to have translation services. It cannot be an afterthought. It cannot be, um, oh, well, let's do a little survey and see who's gonna attend. No, you, like I said at the last CSSJC meeting, you build it, people will come. If they know someone is there to translate for them, if they know they can be included in the conversation, folks will show up. So that's that's my critique. Uh, yes, DEI, y'all are doing a tremendous job. Uh, we we need to get you more funding because the the things that you are coordinating, you know, is uh, going to eventually also cause burnout. So we want to keep you there and we want to support you. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Does anybody else from HRC or CSSJC that has not spoken yet want to raise their hand and speak? I'm not seeing any hand. I will just echo a lot of what everybody else has said um, in terms of funding and community representation of both um, the resident oversight board and the youth empowerment. So I won't go too much into that to save some time. Um, I'll also just echo the wording of fully funded, funded and um, staffed. I, I did take a little issue with that, just seeing both departments of CRESS and DEI 
it does very much seem like to whom is it fully funded and to whom is it fully staffed to? Because if you look at the CSSJC report, that was definitely not the recommendation of the way that it's structured right now and funded, as well as um, the CSSJC has brought up, as well as both departments kind of has brought up in their own budgetary request for the town. We have to bring on a consultant to get the resident oversight board kind of moving in a quicker way than just with the staff of the DEI as, um, and having Cress have limited hours and hours of operations of critical time and critical need for communities, especially marginalized communities that have issues past eight o'clock. And so that I think really needs to be centered in that. And so I think both departments are doing amazing work and to Dee's point, it gets boasted about a lot in newspapers and nationally. And so if we're going to boast about it, let's let's make it last longer. Let's really be, you know, we could be a town that put the crust department nationwide in almost every city and be a kind of epicenter for it to go into reflect back in the blueprint of how did it happen? What did it need? What were some of the things that needed to be fixed of it? And I think this is a great opportunity to recognize that it is not fully funded, it is not fully staffed. And so let's make sure that that happens. Uh, as far as procedure wise, how we're gonna do this, go about it. Um, both co-chairs of the CSSJC and co-chairs of the HRC received an email from Lynn Griesmer stating kind of agenda wise for April 3rd and that it seemed as if there were kind of two folds to April 3rd. Either we go on at 8.30 or and Allegra or D jump on, I forget what the other option was. I feel like it was super early. 5 p.m. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, I don't I think know it was... if I would even be off work yet. Um... Yeah. Same as well. There was another option that came in later today that we delay until the 24th. And so I guess more so in a group think and to have kind of majority wise, what, what do people want to do? What is feasible also because whatever report back we get to the town council, if it is on the third, it will need to be in by the 29th, I believe. And so that's, that's a quick turnaround as well, just to recognize that. Go ahead, Ms. Pat. So process wise, I think uh, you already said what I was thinking. We cannot be taking orders from the town council if it's not feasible for us. I don't think April 2nd, you know, makes sense anyways. It's not enough time for us to put a report together. The second thing is, is the scheduling agenda items. I like to propose that on the day that we agree to meet with the town council, the joint meeting, it has to be this, has to be only one agenda plus public comments, that's it. The, the town council president needs to make time for this report. I don't want checking off the box. One hour is not enough to go over all this. If town council is thinking, well, we asked the town manager to do a report, we got the HLC and CSSJC to get a report, then they put it away. No. That evening, the joint meeting will only be this agenda. So I'd like to suggest for the co-chairs of both committees to send an email to the town council president that April 24 make more sense for us. And we would like it to be just that for that meeting, two to three hours. And um, advertise it. Because whenever it comes to issue of racism and equity and all that stuff, 
it get rushed. We cannot be rushed. Let's do what CSWG did sometimes. We cannot be, let's not be pushed around, please. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ms. Pat. Deborah. Um, actually, it's, it's a question for Ms. Pat, which I agree with everything you said, Ms. Pat, but I, I'm just wondering though, when should we really say for the meeting to happen? Because when is the budget though due? Because with some of May this is like May 1st. So if we have like it that. towards the end, if we do it towards the end of April though, is there going to be enough time for the turnaround time? You know what I'm saying? Because you know, they're going to say no. They're going to be like, you know, so it's just kind of like, so we need to think timing wise or too, like, do we get our report into them then saying, you know, in terms of like the, you know, what, what, what our recommendations are for the budget before we meet with them. So all I'm saying is just like, we just need we to. We already did that. We did that. I think Deb missed Deb, we, the we meeting. Missed, okay, we already submitted it. It's submitted. Uh, so, budget. okay. Yeah, oh, okay, so priorities. We already did okay, that. Okay, so that's a minute then. Yeah. So they know that. So this is just a conversation then? Uh, we're supposed to, this two committees supposed to do a report, joint report. report is no, I get it. I get it. But I'm I, just don't saying think, I don't think we'll be ready with report on the second is my thinking when I read, when I read the report. I don't think that's enough time for us to do that. I could be wrong. When people said busy schedules. No, that's fine. It, yeah. So then I'm just trying to get like an understanding. So, okay. So the budget, which is obviously the, the most important part. That's we already submitted. submitted. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now this report that we're doing on the recommendations is just to kind of like substantiate type of thing in terms of what, you know, what he was saying that that's been accomplished and, and the path forward. Yeah. It's to give it our advice piece on the plan of the path folks forward is my understanding of it is that Paul put together and I don't know how much um, the DI department had to do with it, but um, put this report together of kind of the path forward and what they want to do. And so we're giving our advice piece as to what we liked about it, what we think could be added more about it, what, what these two groups have to say about it basically. Okay. So also the way I'm thinking about it, to be honest with you, I'm not thinking about it as to what the charge is from town council. I'm looking at it as what CSWG, CSSJC has been recommending um, to be more uh, global, more expansive than narrowing it to the report that the town manager put forth. We can include documents that the town council already have because sometimes people forget. So I'm hoping with our report, it will be a robust report to include the information they already have because some of them will pretend like it didn't exist. Yeah, I, even, I think the, that's... even the budget thing that the CSSJC submitted, I will recommend that we include it with our report. If it's repetitive, that's fine. So there will be no question at all that they, you know, they didn't have it, they don't know. And I know you know, everybody is busy. Thank you. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Steve? So I agree with Ms. Pat that it'd be comprehensive, the, uh, the budget, the report from the July 5 uh, group. Um, you know, any other documentation we could include once again, the LEAP uh, recommendations. I mean, I think they need to be reminded mm -hmm. so that when we are, um, when we do submit the report, our report, the collective report, and then we talk about it, that all of that is in the packet. They don't have to go look for it. It's right there. Uh, that's a good point. Definitely. Allegra? Uh, I agree with what everybody has said. I think the 24th makes more sense time-wise in order to actually produce something that we want to, you know, that we feel reflects the importance of this work. Um, I don't, I was just thinking about kind of ways to divide and conquer, and I don't know if it would 
my my thought that popped into my head was maybe a member of HRC pairs up with a member of CSSJC and a tackles like each group would get like one of the items to delve into. I don't know if that would make sense because I, I just feel like otherwise two people end up stuck <laughs> writing the big report and yeah. meeting law and all that stuff. So I don't know if that gets around some of those concerns or or if that even makes sense, but that was just a thought that popped into my head. Right, yeah. Just uh, before I go back to um, the hands raised, is everybody in agreement to move it to the 24th? Like you just get thumbs up from people, whether virtually or not. Yay, nay. Yep, I'm yeah. seeing, yeah, seeing a bunch of yeses. All right, so we're moving it to the 24th. So uh, co-chairs, from CSSJC and HRC, we'll figure out who's responding back to Lynn. I don't really um, have a preference on who, just as long as someone does. <laughs> uh, Ms. Pat? So I'd like to suggest that all the wonderful uh, feedback tonight, if people will remember what they said tonight, you know, write it up it will make the load easy, uh, not easy, but lighter, you know, for the coaches and then submit through uh, Ms. Moisten or something like that to compile, you know, um, for us to go back to the document and do our critique, suggestion, recommendation, and then maybe have two people from each uh, committee, you know, put, put everything together rather than having the coaches write everything. And perhaps the minutes from tonight could help us too. If people forgot what they, what they said tonight. It's what I'm envisioning we should go about it. Yeah, that makes without, sense. I did without, take, yeah. Uh, yeah, without breaking the uh, open meeting law. We just, yeah, yeah. you know, pass things on through Ms. Moisten. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And I did take notes too and I um, notes from this meeting will be good. Uh, Jen or Pamela, I'm going to look to you both for guidance, knowing that it's definitely a tricky thing to open meeting law. What are we allowed to do as a member from HRC and a member from CSSJC allowed to meet offline and put something together without breaking open meeting law? So I, um, I think that the suggestion to have um, one or two members from each uh, commission work on the document is fine. Uh, Philip, you're probably the tricky person because you have representation on both. So right. uh, it might, um, I think, uh, 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 so your presence <laughs> might tip the scale towards one group having um, a quorum. Um, and mm -hmm. I, would suggest maybe that we have a, a a talk with Athena, our resident expert, to to finalize it. But I think the concept is a, is a good one. I don't know, Jen. Do you what have any thoughts? I I don't see any issues necessarily with a, an an individual from each group um, connecting. Well then. From that, then I think that if everybody is okay with that proposal, we, we will get an individual from both groups to kind of summarize what was said tonight. And if you have anything else to add, send it to Pamela and Jen so that way it can be sent out to those individuals. And then that way that report can be written up and then the report can be sent back to the CSSJC as well as the HRC to kind of just finalize like a thumbs up approval we captured or whoever's writing the report captured what was said. Does that plan sound good to everybody? Yeah. D. I guess I was just saying yes. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Um, I just want to be clear. So you're saying, for instance, if Deborah and Juliana were to work together, whatever they create gets sent to me and Pamela. 
Is that what you're saying? And then right. you take everybody's everything and merge it into one document and then send it to both commissions? No, I was thinking that if in that scenario, if Juliana and Deb are working together, they would compile kind of the report to send to you to then send to both groups for the overview kind of thumbs up from both groups. Okay. All right, now I guess we just need that representation and I will admit and acknowledge that my involvement is a tricky one for that since I am a part of both groups. So someone from CSSJC. I can say what I'm willing to work on. I'm working with um, the MS5 folks. So um, I'll be uh, responsible for getting their report to Ms. Moisture, if that makes sense. So in that case, that report cannot be edited because it's coming from them. It is the way it is. Correct. That would just be attached, it, it, just like, just like the be, LEAP report or the yeah. CSWG report. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it will, yep. yeah. It will be final report. Report. It cannot be edited. Well, it seems like we would have like a list of appendices that would include yes. CSWG's yes. previous reports, the LEAP reports, the exactly nine report. Yeah. Um, our you know CSSJC's budget letter and and whatever else we feel like needs to go in there. Um, mm -hmm. I guess one thing I want to maybe clarify with Lynn would be, okay, so we are pushing our meeting back. So when's our next? When's our actual deadline now? Just um, in terms of when we would need to get something yeah yeah typically definitely. let's get go ahead packet materials are due the thursday friday before the meeting okay all right i, I think it's asking five days prior to the meeting is that no okay that's what they're asking five days right did i read somewhere like that or am i imagining something yeah so i i agree with uh with Jen, it's generally the Thursday, I think, before the meeting, because the posting would has to be like 48 hours. And so if the I haven't I don't have a calendar in front of me, but if the 24th is a Monday, then it would be due that thir Thursday. Yeah. So and there's 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 no open meeting law on the packet materials. The reason why is so that people can get through the materials over the weekend typically. So it's typically the, thir and I say Thursday, Friday, because that's when Athena starts sending it out and, and uploading it, so. So quite um, still on the process. Um, how is this? I am thinking we probably need to do one more joint meeting I mean, how are we going to come together and agree on the final report? Do we like send feed, feedback to Ms. Moistin or? Go ahead, John. Um, I think I'm, I'm missing the point of, so there's all of these, people are sending all of these sections of their recommendations who's mm -hmm. compiling all of those, right? Yeah, and then, we're not there yet. <laughs> you're not there yet. Yeah. Okay. And then, I, I mean, yeah, you both of you have, both committees have meetings prior to, or could in theory, no? no CSSJC doesn't? Right no, until May. The, HRC the, will meeting, have a meeting the meeting that we meeting. have scheduled is the April 2nd, the joint meeting. Our next meeting will be in May, May 10th, something like that. 
HRC will have another meeting on the 19th and by the looks of the calendar, the 20th would be when the packet needs to be done. So I think if we want to come together and just, I guess, have a joint meeting at that time. Let's do that if that's yeah. okay with people. Let's do that. That. Makes, that makes the most sense. Then we don't have yeah. to scramble Let's for another date. If that's okay with HRC. <laughs> yeah, I think that would make the most sense for yeah. that. All right, so working on it, I mean, I I will say I, I don't mind working on the report. Again, though, I don't want to be the person that's the problem in the room. So I think that needs to get cleared up first. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't necessarily think, Philip, that, that you would be a problem working on the report. It just is like, originally you guys had, you had said like two members from each committee and there, that's where I think the numbers might be tricky because you might sway one group or the other by your presence if there were four people. But um, I think uh, it's perfectly fine for you to work with one other person. Um, and we can ask Athena for um, specific clarification tomorrow and, and email the co-chairs. The co Dr. Frecke? Um, perhaps I um, misheard uh, Allegra, but I imagined that your suggestion was a person each from the different groups, or was it two people from the different groups? So I think my original suggestion was that if one member from each group were assigned to each so each. one member eight one hrc and one cssjc talking about crests one hrc one cssjc talking about resident oversight board and then all of that information being compiled but it, i think that there was a second proposal that was just that one or two people from each group come together and synthesize all the information that has been said tonight and any other comments that get made um, or, or sent to those people. Okay. I, um, I think I prefer your suggestion, um, but of course, um, whatever is preferable to others holds. Thank you. I mean, given I'm looking at the practicality of working with each, like one person from each committee, it seems to me, I like to think things like in a linear way, it seems like a lot easier if there are topics that people are passionate about. And I'm one of those that I make sure that those points get in, I submit to Ms. Moisten, you know, I'm sure each of us have, you know, areas that they feel strongly about to submit. You know, if I work with somebody and all issues are important, but how do I, what, what am I trying to say? If I work with somebody and the topic that is chosen is not really something I want to work on, I don't know how effective I would be, is what I'm thinking. So we are about how many people? 15 of us, or how many? 15? I don't know how many for both, for, for both groups. If we can submit our, our paragraphs, whatever you want to call it to Ms. Moisten, I think it's a lot easier. And they maybe have maybe three or four people compile it or two people compile it. They're not writing up anything. It's just that they put in all the documents that they received, putting it together. And then we meet on the 20th, you know, uh, we read it before the meeting and then approve it and then send it off to the town council president. No, D. Yeah, I think that's feasible. It's just that um, there, there has to be one to two people kind of putting it all together in a readable form. Mm -hmm. um, 
we will definitely have, uh, you know, hopefully as soon as possible, the recording of this meeting. Um, and, you know, you can transcribe it, uh, but you also have Pamela's taking notes, other people are taking notes. And, and as you said, Ms. Pat, uh, people can submit their comments. Um, I think it's just to figure out, do we put that in one master document? And does that all go to Jen? Uh, and then including the recording and transcript, and then someone is able to compile that and put into a readable form, I guess, is, is the real question. Good point. I mean, Philip has volunteered himself, so we need one more person, right? This volunteer would be for a fellow compiler. Compiler, exactly, yes. Um, I'll be glad to join with you, Philip, on this. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, so then let's move that. So anything that you would like to add or really like to say, um, send an email to Jen and Pamela so that way you can get to Dr. Freke and I, so that way then we can compile all that. We'll compile a document, get it out to everybody. Uh, let's say if you can get your comments in by April 3rd, so that way then we have time, Dr. Freke and I, to write it out before April 19th. And then on April 19th, we'll meet again and have it ready to be sent off to town council for that Thursday. So then that way on the 24th, not that Monday, then we can meet. Um, Philip, council. what was the date that you said that you want everyone's version at? April 3rd for uh, anything that they would like to add in. Can I just maybe suggest that we all try and follow like the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbering so that for the compilers, they're not. Yes, please. You know, <laughs> Thank you for that suggestion. Yes. <laughs> so I don't have to make guesswork that you're talking about the Rob report or the Youth Development mm -hmm. Center. Ms. Pat, you have your hand up? Yeah, a uh, good suggestion, uh, Allegra. The, I also think that we should leave room for miscellaneous because that's where I come in with the July 5th incident. I do want it, I, I'm, not, I'm even thinking it shouldn't be an appendix. It is the impetus why we're here tonight. Even though the, the, the report we're working on has been watered down to confuse and distract, but we're not, you know, we're not stupid here. We're not stupid adults. We know what we're doing. So now that I think about it, it should not be an appendix. It should be, you know, part of the report. If it's okay with everybody. I agree. I yeah, I think it makes sense. I think that's why this kind of even happened, right? It's in because of the November meeting that we had with them in yeah. result to the July 5th incident and everything else yeah. that transpired. So I think highlighting that I think makes perfect sense too. Yeah. It will be painful. Yeah, it will be painful to read. It will be some of them will be controversial, but you know, if you want to heal, we not we need we will need to, you know hear the truth from the people who were impacted. So I, I want it to be really central with everything we're doing in addition to what Allegra suggested. So July 5th will be the first stuff that we do then followed by the, like you suggested Allegra. Yeah. All right, that sounds good, Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie, we cannot hear you. You are muted. I'm wondering when we can see the uh, this report that you're talking about, Miss Pat. Um, would it be something? On the third. On the third. 
Sorry? The report will be, uh, uh, will be I will send it to Ms. Moistin on the 3rd. That's when it's due, right? So I was just wondering if it would help me to see it in terms of the comments that I submit, but that's fine. Oh. Uh, because we're submitting comments, right? On the right, our, our comments, so I think Has should be reflective of the report. The report is itself from the families. And so yeah. I, I would say that our comments would be from as a body of the HRC and not from the Amherst um, nine so, you involved. Right. So our comments are about the DEI, the town manager's report. Only. Um, Is that what we're saying? I just um, want to know what to submit to you. <sighs> Right, that's that's kind of the what we are doing. I I know, I think any comments would be that want to be added into the report. I think we we can find a way to add it in. But yes, it's it's in regard to the report that the town manager sent off. That's what I'm commenting on and sending to Jennifer. I'm seeing a bunch of hands, and I don't know who went first. So uh, Allegra, just, Allegra can go. Yeah, Allegra. So I think that it would be helpful to frame our response in a reminder as the introduction of what happened July 5th and what didn't happen afterwards and say, you know, we received this report following the November, whatever it was, motion by town council instructing the town manager to do these things these things that should have been implemented or, you know, these things that should be in, in place to help avoid these situations from happening again. Cause I do think that it, I think that there is, there should be a link between July 5th and all of the suggestions that were made. I think that the specific suggestions related to July 5th were purposely left out of the motion and I think that, okay. I think that perhaps, you know, I, I, he, I understand what Ronnie is saying too, is if, if we're talking about this family's report, you know, the families who have come together and written a document, it would be helpful to see it. But, but I also kind of hear Philip in that, you know, part of what we're doing is responding to this thing from town manager DEI initiatives. Um, so I, I, th I think I think for me, I would want to see the report prior to, to knowing what or how it was completely being included. But I think that town council needs to get that on their desks. Like it needs to be a part of our report, whether it is embedded in the body or as an appendix. But I think the framing of our response can be July 5th happened and, and nothing happened as a response. And these are the, the points that were made by the town council. These are the points that were left out. And um, or we can say, you know, this was a, the the coming the producing a report was stricken from their initial motion, but we did it anyway. And here it is. Um, Maybe that's a way to get it into the report. You know, these are the things that we wanted in the motion that were deleted from the motion. But just because you deleted it didn't mean that they're not important and we're not going to do them. Exactly. So I right. just went around in a lot of circles there, but I I am I'm hearing you all and I I completely agree with you all. And I will just add to that we are going to have the benefit of meeting with town council as well to state this all in in public to be honest alongside with the report so definitely I I will just acknowledge it's going to be some tricky wordplay but it, it will happen is, is what I will say. So I think um, we should also consider history. Okay, um, I'm thinking more of future generation. Who knows one day, 50 years to come, when some of us are not here anymore. 
myself included, who knows, my great, great, great whatever, pick it up. Or is this what my, you know, did? Wow. You know, so history, we can donate that, that this document to our local libraries. Because what happened last year, if the town has responded accordingly, appropriately, we will not be sitting here tonight because they decided to ignore it. And that's why, that's why we're doing this. And we will have to see it through because the families have been talking to them. They've been you know, sharing how they're composing their document. It's going to be comprehensive. It's going to refresh everybody's memory. Every single fallout on that incident will all be put together. Everything. All the role, roles that different people played, every single actors will be included in the report. Sunshine is the best medicine. Yeah. Um, so did you say for me to go, Phil? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think what we want to do, I know we, we're, we're not going to have the benefit of like looking at the report um, before we submit our comments, but I guess we do have to find a way to kind of like include it in a seamless way in terms of what Allegra was saying, right? Some type of, of kind of intro about it in the beginning and then including the report, right? Including maybe, yeah, like what we said, some of the recommendations that we had made, which was not taken up by the um, town council and then, you know, saying that we're, we're supporter, supportive of the report. You see what I'm saying? So I think that that, you know, if we're going to put, put that as the first portion, we have to kind of weave it in and then address the DEI um, town manager report. But like Ms. Pat has said, I think we also want to add whatever else we want to add. I don't think we need to be constrained by Exactly. You know, just addressing what what the town manager and in the and DI kind of created in terms of the report, we need to kind of say whatever else we want to say in terms of like a lot of the CSWG um, um, recommendations that weren't included. You know, anything else around the you know Amherst Nine. You know, any other issues you want to include in. The, so, so for me, it's like when I said my comments, I'm going to be kind of talking about you know anything that I feel is important is and, and impactful. So that we can include in this and so that then yeah i think it's going to be good that we're going to talk about it but as we know a lot of what times we talk they just kind of like you know take us on this wild goose chase so i think we need to have it documented okay definitely right another yeah another lingering issue for me is then what we submit this report CSWG submitted report, it's only CRES and DEI program that was implemented. So we submit, you know, we have this meeting on the 24th, then what? Yeah, but I, I think that that's so what about, what are the our question demands? at hand that you had yeah. brought up even at last meeting, kind of what CSSJC's role is, what the HRC role is. I think that, that that's for sure the bigger question mm -hmm. of past this report. Because yes, we can hand it, this report into D and everybody else's um, comments. Is that how much of it will be listened to, and what will happen afterwards? So yeah, I think that that's something to definitely think about. Yeah, yeah no. it is my yeah, it is my struggle. That's my struggle. Like we do all this exercise, another performance show. Um, what commitment are we getting from the decision makers, the town council? Are they going to fully fund CRES? This fiscal year is oversight board really going to happen? All that stuff we need to know from them. So how do we go about doing that after the report or before the report? I've struggled with that. I just don't want report that will be collecting dust. And I think the town council did this to put pressure off of them. Then, you know, and no action. Ronnie? I wonder if we could just ask as part of the communications about dates and whatnot, 
I wonder if we could ask, I have the same concern. How is this report going to be used? And could we suggest please that you take a vote at the end of this discussion, because we're all putting a lot of time into this. You take a vote about whatever, but I would really like to see a concrete outcome from this. I just, you know, it just seems like from looking at the previous reports, it's just more of the same. I think the message has been communicated and the question really is what is going to be done? If the town manager has gotten involved in proposing something, will there be an, a budget allocated to this? And what will be the oversight of that budget? You know, will DEI oversee it and make sure things happen? And I don't know what, but we do have to ask them to decide on something. And for me, I would need to see the document to be able to say what thing. But if we could pick a few items and say, we're asking on this date because we are putting all this work into it, that the council take a vote and say what they, do they support this or not? Yeah, definitely. Deborah. Yeah, I, I agree with that because um, that's what I was thinking. I, it, and and remember, some of the town council members, you know, which I won't name the ones that brought it up, um, but I remember they were like, "Oh, you need to be very specific. You need to really kind of, you know, showcase, you know, by bullet." And I, I don't know if we have to do smoke signals. I don't know what it is, but we need to kind of really be succinct in terms of what we're looking for. But I think that's what I think when we meet prior to submitting the report, we need to come up with, okay, these are some of the main kind of points that we want you all to vote on or to decide on or whatever the case may be, as opposed to kind of doing the whole laundry list. I think we want to put everything that we're, we're talking about and, and, and things they need to change, but then we need to kind of really bullet point, okay, this is what we're looking for and we need you all to make a decision now so that then when, if they don't make a decision and they continue to you know, just delay their delay tactics, then we can take it to the media, take it to wherever we need to take it to, to continue the pressure, because really that's the only way we're going to be able to get anything done. But, um, but yeah, we, we need to be very succinct. I agree. Yeah, definitely agree. Okay, well, if, yeah. if no one has anything else to say, I think that the joint part of this meeting is done and oh what is Jen did you did you guys or you're going to do that offline to figure out who's working with who me and Freke are working together and the individuals are submitting stuff to you and then you forward it to them so each individual's forwarding something so I thought you, the individuals were working in teams no no that was an early on proposal. Yeah. So anybody that has anything else to say, we'll send it to you and Pamela, who then if you could just pass that information all along to me and Freke, and me and Freke will compile the report and send out to the overall group. And all of our comments need to go in by April 3rd. Yes. To you, correct. to Jennifer. So we send everything to Jennifer April 3rd, and then you forward it, Jennifer and Pamela, and then you forward it to um, Philip and Freke. Yep. So since, oh. yeah, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna thank CSSJC for being here and HRC members, we just have a few things to go through, but I promise we won't go that way. Can I just say one, one last thing? Yeah. So very quickly, I will get the um, uh, MS5 report to Ms. Moistin next week, Friday, so that you guys will have time to read it. You know, it looks like it's very important for you guys to to say it when you do your own submission. Yep. Okay. Next week, Friday, not this week. Next week. Yep. Good night. Sounds good. Thank you, CSSJC. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Good night. All right, HRC. Next item that we have is uh, bylaws. That's a pretty quick update. Tyler, Ronnie, and myself um, have all kind of submitted um, individual report type of things, and it has not gone to Pamela and Jen, and they will compile a uh, full kind of change to the bylaws, and once that happens, and we will get that out for approval for all members. Um, 
API month celebration. Uh, someone's going to have to remind me. I don't have good notes on that. Who was taking that on? I'm going to defer that one to Juliana. She's been a rock star in this. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so far, I just told um, the people of Color United, a club at the high school that I'm a part of, I just asked them to submit some things. Uh, I'm still in the process of getting like a school-wide daily announcement thing for student participation on it. Um, we decided on a date, May 7th, uh, Sunday. Uh, it's an important day in the Asian American Pacific Islander community. There's, I've been, I'm going to reach out soon to like Amherst College clubs and organizations in UMass clubs and organizations to see. Also kind of looking into anyone, any craftspeople in the area who have anything to input. And also Ms. Moyston has just as long of a to-do list in terms of like getting things, you know, uh, a rain date at the Bangs Community Center, getting the, the town common reserved for an outdoor thing things like that, but it should be, should be pretty cool. Yeah, awesome, thank you. And that was May 7th, you said, for the event? Yes. Yes, What okay. time? Uh, I think it's gonna be around one or 12 because, you know, it's gonna be a Sunday and also there might be services going on. So it's gonna be like mid afternoon. All right. If everybody could possibly mark their calendars for that, that'd be great. And any um, help that you need day of or even leading up to um, let people know and we can use our resources to help out. Uh, what is the next item here? Human Rights Youth Hero Awards. I believe I signed up for that and I will admit I have not done anything. So I don't really have much, Jen. Um, so I, I think that the folks last year who participated from the Julius Ford, Harriet Tubman, Healthy Living Community still want to continue on with their basketball tournament, Old versus Young, in combination with the Human Rights Commission. So I think that's a go. I thought we had found a date, Philip. Did we not say? I thought we said June 4th. Did we? I don't. I don't have that in mind. I think. I haven't confirmed it otherwise, you know. Right. Is June 4th a Sunday? Yes. Yes. That's the day of the senior prom. Okay. Uh, so the third, did we uh, say the third then? Can we, actually, I can't do the third. Can we do the 10th? Isn't that, is that graduation, Liz? Graduation is the ninth. Okay. So the 10th could possibly work? Yeah, that works because it gives us a little more time. Okay. All right, and I'll connect with you on that. But that's good to hear the basketball is going to be a go because that was a big crowd drawing in. You know, um, am I grilling that day? I just need to mentally prepare myself for that again. Well, I think we might be able to get someone to help with the grilling okay. this time. Like, we had a lot going on. That was a lot um, of grilling that day. Yeah, we had a lot going on that day. So, um, and, you know, I think, Philip, as you and I work together on it, we can break things down into shifts for people because it's really not fair to have one person at the grill the whole entire time. Right. right? Yeah. So we should be able to break it down into shifts. Yeah, definitely. Miss Haygood, are you going to um, MC the, you, uh, the awards there and not make me speak that day? Dag, man, I wrote up everything you needed to say. Shoot. <laughs> um, right now, I think that date is open for me. So sure. <laughs> All right. All right. And that I think is the last of our action items. Um, we are, I don't know if there's anybody still here in the public, but we do have one more um, public comment period. If anybody would like to raise their hand to speak from the public, please do so now. We will recognize you to come in.
All right, I am not seeing any hands being raised. So unless anybody has anything else that they would like to bring up from HRO, oh, actually, um, I, damn, I don't really want to, but I just kind of wanted to get a uh, update on um, complaints filed with HRC. I know that there was one. Is there any update on that or no? So the, we're still in the process of investigating the complaint. Okay. Um, so there's, uh, we've spoken with all of the parties locally, but there is a um, state agency coming next week to, um, to weigh in. Okay, thank you for that update. Ronnie, you have your hand up. I just had a quick question. If it's not quick, let's forget it. But it's a thought that came to me when I was reading the notes about a complaint process and where the human rights complaint process fits in all of this. Like we're trying to set up something new for the police review board. And I'm just wondering, is the Human Rights Commission a more independent? Um, uh, I don't know. And it's also confusing for people to have two processes. So that's something that I think at some time it would be helpful to discuss to have one process and maybe we work with the police review board or something like that. But yeah, so that's just something I'm throwing out when we're going forward with these different, um, on these different lines. So um, can I, I'll just try to quickly answer that the, the, um, the way in which the bylaw is written, it's written very broadly. And in theory, someone could bring a complaint to HRC. And in fact, uh, HRC wrote a complaint about the July 5th incident that went to the police department. Um, so this, the bylaw is very broadly. And basically, anyone who feels that they've been discriminated against or any violation of the law could bring a complaint here. The problem with bringing a complaint to HRC is that we have no authority to adjudicate a complaint, even for individuals who are, who are you know, like the complaint that we're currently investigating, um, where uh, the most that we can do is to mediate and try to, um, to come to some consolidation conciliatory agreement between the parties or direct the parties to the appropriate state and federal um, uh, agencies. Yeah, and I, I think that when the resident oversight board does get made, I think that a review process of that bylaw should be looked at, but it, it could have its benefit as Pamela stated that if someone felt more comfortable coming to the HRC to raise a complaint, that then the HRC can then raise a complaint with the um, resident oversight board. So that way that gets done if that is somebody's preferred option to go through. But that is a good point, Ronnie, thank you. Does anybody else have anything? All right, I am not seeing any hands or anything. So then I am going to say that the HRC meeting is adjourned at 8.12. Thank you everybody for coming and looking forward to the next month here and the work that we have. Bye everybody, see you soon. Bye. Bye.